asymptomatic again were these normal findings in cases 24 and 25a, which are different cases. Note in 25b, antrum normality and signs of chronic pancreatitis. Thickened folds in 25c were the leading feature causing no symptoms at all. Both these two patients in 26 and 27 had similar symptoms, but reasons were different. High ileus in 26 and diabetic polyneuropathia in 27. This patient in case 28 had huge but asymptomatic gastric tumor. In 28b, this little tumor found was asymptomatic as well. As this was, remarkably enough, reported as well by this alcohol addict in 29 with a huge pseudocyst. And as well, in this case 30, with a new renoma of finally 5.0 kilograms in weight. In here, in 31, the classical aspect of a wall thickening was the leading symptom. PEGs are shown in the correct position, case 32, dislocated and with an abscess formation in case 33, and endoscopically in a correct position again, in a case 34. A the PEG channel information, in this case 34B, was symptomatic with fever and local pain. Through cardia and esophagus, you can see by echography the relieving tube. In 35B, this asymptomatic polyp turned out in endosonography to be a probably benign lesion. In case 36, nicely displayed are detailed information about the patient not being fasting as here and on pancreas 8, normal anatomy. This is as well the case in 37a as the antrum adjacent normal lymph nodes and part of splenic vein. Normality again in 37b, including pyrus and bulbous gas as important features. Whereas in 37c, a wall thickening in the dorsal antrum portions indicate a gastric carcinoma. And the same is true in case 38 with a normally collapsed antrum parenchym uh, reduced pancreas, normal filarous side arteria gastroduodenalis. A wall thickening and wall destructing tumor is both found in echoscopia in figure 38b and subsequently in 38c as well, not more than unspecific Upper abdominal discomfort, not even pains, were reported by the patient. In suicidal tension, this liquid was ingested. Some hours later, intramural gastric gas was found in 38D, whereas a generalized swelling was described in 38E the day after. The patient survived after gastrectomy. But unlike the two different cases in 39A and B with wall thickening, wall stiffness, and the loss of layers again. In case 40, these stigmata are limited 
to the gastric antrum alone. In case 41, however, this is the pathology of a generalized maltose. And 42A has typical features of a myoma with its sharp margins and non-invasive appearance. Unlike the different case 42B of an invasive growing and ulcerated stomach carcinoma. In case 43, a linitis plastica again is obviously demonstrated. In 44, a carcinoma recidive, few years after operation, had a similar appearance like a case of 41, but a different history and pathology. Reasons for these complaints in case 45 was a gastric sarcoma. An obturating anterior polyp turning out to be a lipoma in case 46 was found. Histology in case 47 remained unclear despite numerous worldwide attempts and ceased after one year spontaneously. Again and localized to fundus case 48 and to antrum case 49 carcinomata had to be found unfortunately in both cases. 50 shows a lymphadenopathia in local metastasizing antrum carcinoma. Again and rather discreet in case 51, localized anterior wall thickening turned out to be malignant. Whereas the pathological cocard in case 52 had to be attributed to a colon transversum carcinoma. Again show figures 53A and 53B, the stomach antrum, the pylorus and the bulbus as a normal. This probable myoma in 54 is asymptomatic as well. On the contrary, in case 55, a generalized wall thickening could be transiently observed in the course of an enteroid. Asymptomatic is this incidental finding in 55b2 an aneurysm of the hepatic artery. Both cases 56 and 57 show constantly captured gas in these huge alcus craters, the first behind and the second before the pylorus. Free abdominal gas, not air, is in 58 with the details in 59a Number one, bulb. Number two, gas. Arrow transmural alteration operatively confirmed. And as a movie in 59b, endoscopic aspect of this same case is in 60. In case 61a, it is completely intestinally captured. A gas demonstrated. Left sided in 61b, you will see captured gas in the lung where small but significant volumes of gas are between liver and abdominal wall. Whereas in 62, a gas is found in left side position and flank sections between abdominal wall and liver. A rather seldom case of Crohn's disease manifestation is shown in case 63. In 64, a perforated gallstone was captured in the bulbus and smashed with a 
ESWL in three sessions completely. This distension in 65A was due to an orator concretion which resulted in this chronic distension. Whereas in another case, in 65b, a metastatic prostate carcinoma caused urinary obstruction and in 65c, in again another case, it was a long-standing urinary obstruction leading to hydronephrosis. In case 66, careful echoscopic examination revealed the reason of pain's uh, ureter stone.